Hey everybody, this is Bill from Bill's Ship, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about the Moog Song Producer a module for the Commodore 64. This is going to be the basic functions that I can get working. It's a very complicated machine. So uh, if you want to hear some sounds, you want to skip ahead um, in the video, you can see that in the description the exact time. So you see it has an expansion port that plugs in just like a cartridge. One MIDI in, one MIDI through, and four MIDI outs. Foot switch jacks, a bunch of drum trigger outs, and some clock input that I don't really know too much about and this beautiful little graphic of everything that's going on inside of the machine which I believe you can find a better picture of this on the internet okay so to get this baby working you have to set it up just right um, I've got a MIDI input over there coming from my Yamaha uh, DX21 keyboard so that's like inputting notes and then here that is the um, output that runs into my MIDI hub, which sends out to Zoxbox, sends out to the modular synth, and pretty much everything else. Now, of course, you have to have the uh, floppy drive to uh, use the software. So you have to get this running from a cold start, says the manual. So you pull out your trusty thing, get your floppy, put it in there. Uh, Close it, not yet, I guess. Turn on your computer. There's that nice blue screen. Let's see. First thing you do is turn on your machine. You close it, locking position, and enter in your code here. Hold on, doing this one handed. You're going to do load not low sad shift comma eight comma one let's see if this works sounds like it's working ah uh, yes the moog song producer The Moog Song Producer System, copyright 1984, it gives us five settings here uh, to choose from. Now, I don't know anything about drum syncing or using the drum uh, settings, so I'm skipping that completely for this video. I have tried, but I don't really have a drum machine that supports that. Um, so we're going straight to Song Stepper. That seems to be the best thing. So let's hit one and return. This takes a very long time, by the way, so I'm going to cut board in just a sec. Moog presents, drum roll, long drum roll, song stepper. This is where it takes about a minute, so I'm going to cut the video off. A computerized aid to music composition. You're the producer. You're the composer. It is your orchestra. Oh, it sounds so good. Now let's see if it's true. All right, it's loaded. So should we load a song from disk? No, because we don't have a disk. Song title. Cool. All right, so here it is. Um, once again, I don't know anything about the drums. Transpose. Don't know very much about it. I'm not recording any music, so we're gonna go with the edit music mode number three. Segment name A. Loading. Alright, so this is the way you do it from my experience. You can enter it in the keyboard, each note, and by keyboard I mean the computer keyboard, but um, I couldn't get it working this time, and um, so I'm gonna enter it using my DX21. So this is set up running into the MIDI input. So let's see if I can get this working. Quick little tutorial on how to delete notes. 
um, you use space to move forward as a cursor, and then you're going to hold shift and hit space, and it takes you back to the beginning. You're going to hit D, D, D for delete, etc. Alright, now how to enter notes. I'm using the keyboard again, so I'm going to go up here, I'm going to hit an E, and then, you ch then the next thing you're going to do is choose your duration. So I'm going to make this a, I guess it's a quarter note, so you hit 4, and then enter, and it plays that note. And now let's do a C, and hit a 4, and an enter, and then maybe we'll do a couple sixteenths or eighths, I can't remember, A, 2, G, 2, and then the lower D, and we'll do 1, and go up really high, and hit 1, and we'll do a longer note, let's do a C sharp, 8. There you go. It looks a little confusing at the end, but that's how you enter notes. And then to play, you're going to hit P. Now, um, I'm going to, uh, I've already made a song, so I'm going to cut over to that, uh, synced with drum machine and everything else. Okay, so here is the final product after about 40 minutes of entering notes and working with tempos and clocks and such. So here we go. I'm going to hit the P button to get this started. Once again, this is running through my dope um, modular synth over here. It's also controlling my drum machine and the Zox box over here. Let's see what it sounds like together. Pretty nice. <laughs> All right, so to stop this, we go over here and we're going to hit the F3 button and it stops. Something else that I've noticed here is that you can see up in the top right corner it says segment clock. Now when I, the default setting is one to four ratio and for some reason that started putting everything into triplets. And so this was running at some crazy triplet time. So what you have to do is you're gonna hit your T button it's going to ask for your beats per measure, and so I do, I guess, like two, I don't know. And then when it says segment clock, instead of four, you want to do three, and then hit enter. I can't seem to speed it up any faster than this slow pace, so you're going to hit P just to, just to show y'all. That's what we had before, and that's F3 to stop it. Hit T again, and let's we'll change it up. Let's do two. And this time let's do one to one, and you can hear how ridiculous it's gonna sound. Let me turn the Zox box off. Here we go. Get ready. All right. So that speeds it up. And to go back again, T, two, three. Very 
to go. And to exit this, I've found if you hit H, it kind of saves it and brings you to a mem uh, memory page. I guess that's some stuff I've been doodling around on. You hit any key and it'll take you back to the menu. To do your sync, you hit 9. It's going to ask you if you want it at high or medium or low. I just set it at medium. And then it asks you this 12-8 time. I think this is the default. And so if you want to get out of the 12-8 time, you're going to hit N for no. And the manual, after looking for 15 minutes, tells you that this reverts it back to 4-4 four, four times. So that's what saved me. That's what made it stop working as triplets. Um, or maybe it was the fact that I put it into 1 to 3 ratio. I'm not exactly sure. This manual is very confusing. Now, as for the drums and the transpose and the record, I don't fully understand it just yet. But um, I really don't want to spend any more time on this. Now, what I have found is that what you save, saves into um, your memory inside of the C64. I guess like a buffer memory. Now, you have to use um, blank floppies to actually save onto, but you know... I hear those things like rot or something, so um, I don't have any of them. Um, but, uh, and I don't really have any use to save anything, so if you really care, you can go buy some extra floppies online. Um, but uh, I don't know if those are even available anymore. Okay, the last thing to look at is the manual. It is gigantic. Let's take a look. It's got all the inspection things in it. Ooh. This is where the floppy disk goes. It's got all the information, blah, blah, blah. Look how hard to understand all of this stuff is. Now, I've looked through as much as I can, but I mean, it's very dense and very dry. There's a few attempts at humor in here um, that are actually pretty funny. Maybe I'll try to find one. So it just keeps going. There's a huge reference section here in the back. And, if you need to find help in West Germany, here are the many locations you can turn to. Not sure about East Germany, um, I guess, uh, I guess they still can't get over that wall. One last note about this, they originally supposedly had an idea to create an analog module for the Commodore 64, created by Moog. That would have been pretty awesome. Um, this doesn't create any sound on its own. Um, the uh, song producer, it only creates uh, the MIDI signals. So it would have been really awesome to have like an analog module where you can, you know, um, create everything on your Commodore and then control your own um, analog sounds. That would have been really amazing and kind of revolutionary, I think. So you didn't have to get, you know, this huge modular synth. Um, but that never came to be, so now it's just an empty checkbox on an old box. Um, anyway, thanks for watching the video. Um, I don't think I'm going to make any more videos about this, so hopefully somebody else in the future documents it. So um, thank you very much for watching.